Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another Self-Working Saturday. So today I'm teaching you a version of a trick called Spello from Self-Working Card Tricks by Carl Fuldis. Let's get into it. So here's something kind of cool uh, that we can do with some cards. So as you can see, uh, they're all mixed and they're all here. And in fact, we'll take a Joker out and we'll use it for later, all right? So what I'd like you to do is uh, deal the cards out into two piles, face up so we can all see them, all right? So they would then uh, take the cards and start dealing the cards face up into two piles like this. And in fact, they can shuffle as much as they like and they can take cards from anywhere they want to. They don't have to be from there. And then uh, we'll make a new pile when there's about half. Uh, just like this, all right? So they're shuffling, they are making piles uh, randomly like this, just to randomize the cards and so that we can all see them, all right? So what we'll do now is we'll turn the cards face down and uh, they could choose any pile they'd like. And let's say they, let's say they chose this one right here, all right? But they, it's a free choice, all right? So what we would do is put the Joker that's been sitting there the whole time on top of their chosen pile. And then they would complete the cut and um, we would go through what just happened, all right? So think about this for a second. They shuffled the deck as much as they wanted to. Uh, they stopped whenever they wanted to, made two piles, chose a pile they wanted to, cut wherever they want to. Everything was their choice. I never touched the deck. And uh, they put the Joker right where they wanted to put it. No force at all. All right, so watch this. The Joker is right here in the middle. And since it's a Joker, we'll spell the word Joker, right? So that's J O K. E R. We'll land on that card right there and we'll pull it out. No funny moves, all right? So imagine this. Imagine if I knew something about the future, uh, so much so that I wrote something on the back of this Joker. I wrote down a card. You can see I wrote down the three of spades, just like that. Now think about this. You could have cut anywhere. You shuffled. You did everything. I never touched the deck. Wouldn't it be insane if this card was actually the three of spades? Just check it out, and sure enough, it is. All right, so like I said, this is a version of Spello from Still Working Card Tricks by Carl Fulvis. Um, my method is totally different, and I think that it suits my style better, but you can go through and learn it how it was originally written up if you'd like to, uh, but this is just how I do it, all right? So we'll need to do Let's take a card, in my case I have the three of spades, and then you'll write that card on the back of a joker. Next you will put the fourth card five from the face of the deck, so that's one, two, three, four, and five because it's joker, J-O-K-E-R. Next you'll just put the, uh, the joker somewhere in the middle of the deck like this, put the cards in the box, and you're ready to rock and roll. So you can come out with it. See, look, we have a deck of cards here. Would you like to see something pretty cool? See, look, all the cards are here. They're all mixed up and whatever. And then just as an after that, we'll just toss the Joker aside as if it doesn't matter, all right? So just toss this Joker aside. And then you'll hand the deck to them. And then you'll ask them to make two piles face up. Just do the cards face up in two piles. And so what they'll do naturally is they'll just start doing cards like this and they'll run past it through spades, but they never remember. They never, they're seeing so many cards, but they don't know what to look for anyway. So it doesn't matter, all right? So uh, after they've dealt past that three of spades, and so like they don't have to come right from there. They can come from anywhere. And in fact, go ahead and give them a shuffle just so they're completely random. All right, so they're shuffling. They're taking cards from different places of the deck. And this feels so fair and so like it, it's, it really catches them off guard and, and it lets their guard down, you know? So they're shuffling, they're making piles and stop and they can stop anywhere to make the new pile. And then they're doing this. And uh, look how fair and random this looks, you know? There's, uh, it seems like there's no way you can have control of the card. But what you do, because the three of spades is right over here, uh, five from top. Now what you do here is say, wow, you've done, you did that so well, nobody ever done it that well, or whatever you wanna do, right? Just make them feel good about themselves because you know sometimes they can get worried about uh, procedures like this. Anyway, take the packers and turn them face down. Now here comes the cool part. You ask them to just point to any power they want to, and it really doesn't matter uh, which one they choose because it's gonna be a magician's choice, all right? So if they choose this one, by the way, this packet over here has one that's five from down, three of spades. So just make sure you keep track of that. All right. So they pick, they choose any pile. If they choose this one, say perfect, pick that pile up. And and what you do here, if, you, if they choose this one, they pick it up. Take the Joker and you put it on there and say, put your packet on top of the Joker. 
All right, so if they choose the target pile, say perfect, uh, we'll take the Joker and put it on top of that pile. All right, so and you, you ask them to pick up this pile and complete the cut. So as you can see, it doesn't really matter uh, which pile they choose because you're always gonna put the Joker on top of this pile, okay? So, so keep that in mind. So again, if they choose the non-target pile, say perfect, pick it up and we'll put the Joker right on top of that pile and then put your pile on top of it. If they choose the target pile, say perfect, we'll take the Joker and put it on top and do me a favor, complete the cut. So that happens just like this. So the Joker is in the middle, directly above the, uh, the five card setup. Now you just recap, you say, think about this for a second. You shuffle the deck, you cut anywhere, you did everything. Really dramatize the conditions, right? And make it seem so impossible and fair. It really is fair, but there's one card that you kept, kept control of, all right? So you shuffle the deck, you cut anywhere, you stopped anywhere, blah, blah, blah. Now look at this. The Joker should be somewhere in the middle. And since it's a Joker, we'll spell the word Joker. From here, we'll go J O K E. R and land on the R, pull this card out, which will be the three of spades, of course. And then you say, look, wouldn't it be crazy if I peeked into the future and I knew something about what you would do? So much so, in fact, that I wrote something down on the back of this Joker right here. And what I wrote down is a playing card. And I wrote down the three of spades, just like that. And wouldn't it be crazy? Imagine a scenario where this card would happen to be that three of spades after all that shuffling, after all that cutting that you did. I never touched the deck, but whatever you want to say, right? Really dramatize those conditions to make it even stronger than it actually is, okay? And so you turn it over and boom, it's a three of spades. All right, guys, so as always, I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch it. It means the world to me reading all of your nice comments and everybody who likes this video and hit subscribe and it helps me out more than you think. So until next time, happy practicing. I love you guys.